Yeah, why not? Let's get weird before the uh, trade deadline comes and goes. What time is the uh, trade deadline? Five o'clock Central Time? Yes. So we got uh, 26 minutes for the Sox to do something really underwhelming and watch Kevbo over there lose his stuff. Uh, Meller, do the Padres have anybody left in their farm system or have they traded everybody? Who cares? It's about winning now, Waddle. Yeah, but your team Flags fly you, forever. Your Padres still stink. Flags. No, they don't. My Padres are Did in your the Padre, thick What did your Padres do run? last year? Last year? Yeah. Last year, they were one of the hottest teams that just had some unfortunate luck as they uh, just missed the playoffs by one, I think it was one, one and a half games at the end of the season there. So, By the way, the Marlins have traded their entire team. How how can, if people want the Marlins players, why aren't the Marlins better? It, it's the same with the White Sox. The White Sox had quite a few trade what pieces. What did they say that, that you, the, the sum of uh, some, some of, of the parts, parts are greater than the whole? The, is that, I always that screw that one up too. Yeah, would that be accurate? For who? The, for for the Marlins? Talking about the Marlins and of the White Sox. Well, no. the White Sox. I don't know. All right, so the White I'll Sox have traded parts. Paul DeYoung, right? Okay. They have. Uh, Garrett Crochet has not been dealt yet. Correct. And did I read the same thing? Was Jesse also reporting that Robert is expected to stay and they're not going to trade him? Is that what I was hearing as well? Cubs have traded Mark Leiter Jr. for stuff. I don't know. Are you happy with what you got? Yeah, it, 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 from what I've read, it was like a decent return. It was not an over-the-top return, but you just couldn't sit on him either. And you know how got a younger go. reliever, a guy that will yes. be part of your future. Mark Leiter Jr. is thirty-four years of age, so yeah, you got a you got an infield a twenty-four-year-old infielder in pro, a pro, uh, prospect and a reliever prospect. Can I say, like, I, I think Jed has, I think he's done an okay job right now. I mean, I would still trade Tyon, but I don't have a problem with how Jed approached trading Morrell or Leiter. I need more. Do you think you're going to get anything else? I don't think you are. I usually not. But from what you, when have we been, we, we, I seem to think that we always sit here at these trade deadlines waiting for the Bulls to do something. <laughs> Waiting as, as the clock expires. Oh, there could be a deal, you know, that just got in right at the deadline that will be uh, announced after the deadline, and it and it's never with one of our teams. And then at the end of the day, uh, teams weren't giving us what we thought was proper value, so we decided that, you know, we're just gonna stand pat for now. Why do you think a Garrett Crochet trade hasn't been made right now? If in fact it, it's to be done. Do you think Chris Getz is just holding out? They're taking he's advantage of him. You think he's a little, his head spinning a little bit right now? Do you think his, his uh, hurt feelings are getting in the way? I thought his hurt feelings, the way everyone was phrasing it, was expediting the process. Was It, it was sounding like things are not good. They were going to expedite this thing. And, and even though they maybe could get a better return in the offseason, like I think, I think it's dumb, again, that, that it's like fait accompli that he's going to get traded in general. Uh, uh, it's, it's just amazing. Like they identify Bobby Witt Jr. as a, a centerpiece of the Royals when they stink, and they lock him up. If Mel Pierre Crochet is a centerpiece, why lock not him, lock him up? Lock him up. Uh, Meller, who has excelled in this uh, Major League Baseball trade frenzy? I, I you Danny you, winners? You hit winners? It, but no, I do. I do legitimately think the Padres uh, have done a lot to improve their their uh, team down the stretch here. I. Yeah. I think, um, too, Jack Flaherty's the other big name that everyone's kind of waiting to be traded. He is expected to be dealt before the deadline by the Tigers. He's the other really good pitcher who's on the market, aside from Garrett Crochet. Uh, the Atlanta Braves are getting the band back together again. They oh, acquired yeah. Jorge Soler or, earlier that. this morning. Yeah, he that. hit dingers for them. Like yeah, when, of them didn't he? when they went on their playoff run and won the World Series a couple of years ago, back when Ronald Acuna also had an ACL injury the first time, Jorge Soler really carried helped carry them to that World Series. So uh, the Braves have reacquired him uh, after Acuna has another uh, ACL injury. Any other Tyler ones? That's well, it. Yeah, Soler was the World Series MVP yes. Right? Yes. of that as well. Uh, as we told you earlier, Caleb Williams and the rest of the Bears starters will not play in the Hall of Fame game. You think we should ask Kevin Warren about his thoughts on that? Did yeah, you think? he's yeah. a team president. Yeah. 
Can I give you an Olympic update, or do I have to tell you to close your ears? I, I, I think for this one, you will say, like, be warned. If, if you're waiting for the coverage tonight in prime time, or if you have it on DVR from earlier today, give us, like, a minute here. Because we don't want you to tune out. But just give us a minute. Because are this you, are is you talking about the the gymnastics. Yeah, yeah. this is pretty big. Abdallah spoiled it earlier. Oh, he did. But but the, but we, different we, audience. We have a different audience. Oh, can I just tell you that Matthew Judon has not been seen at the Patriots uh, camp today after a spat. So I'm right now. You're in. You're in. Okay. We're giving you 60 seconds to turn turn away. Oh no, I I didn't think we were giving. A, we were going to give the announcement here. Right. In in a sixty second time frame, so then they could come back in oh, sixty. Okay, all so right. Give so, the news really quick. Okay, so right now, uh, I'm here to tell you, Simone Biles and the U.S. women uh, team won the gold at the. They won the women's team gymnastics gold at the Olympics. The redemption tour has paid off. They're the, back on the podium. You know, maybe I should save this for Friday if, if we. Your do big it. women's gymnastics gymnastics guy i'm huge yeah. huge women i will be watching tonight i've watched uh nbc even though coverage. you know the outcome the yes yes it, it, this is going to be on my uh that's a bad take um for friday I'll, I'll reset this again i don't understand sports fans sometime with the olympic stuff if we have results from a an nfl game we never have to say Turn your radio down. We have results from the Ravens Patriots game. The Ravens just beat the Patriots 31 to 27 on a last second touchdown by Lamar Jackson. We don't have to do it because it's a live sporting event. And we know that we're in the sports business and people who are listening to us uh, know that we're going to talk about live sporting events. But when it comes to the Olympics and when it comes to these different types of sports that are on well, and it was, it's not even just tape delay. They will carry this live today, too, that people have this expectation, at least some, that we could be the spoiler. Again, we are a sports show that gives sports results in real time. When the mass, when uh, the British Open's going on, for instance, uh -huh. we don't wait to give you who shot what that day. I don't understand this. I it's on well it's a I bad mean, take. It's a bad take, Jesse. But I don't see I don't think it's well, the event has happened and it, you're not going to be able to see it with the Olympics with tape delay. It's well, happened, you, well, but you're going to be able to watch they, it. On demand, well, DVR. That's true, that's but they are. That's the that's the thing though, is that they the people who are listening to us, a lot of them have been conditioned throughout their life to watch the NBC package broadcast of the Olympics when they go home in the evening. And so I understand if like you're somebody who is not living and dying with every single moment of the Olympics, but you do like to go home and then flip it. You, you said last yesterday, Sylvie, it's great to have on in the background and kind of just catch up with what's going I love on. It. So, and that's kind of how I watch it too. My wife, my daughter are really getting into the women's gymnastics team. And so I understand that people don't want to necessarily have it spoiled for them. It isn't a it's a it's a live sporting event that is being carried. The Premier League soccer, we do we we give you what's going on in the middle of the day. I mean, it's twenty twenty four. You if you are really into whatever Olympic event that you're into, you can watch it while it's happening at any time. You don't have to wait till seven or eight o'clock. Stream it. Stream it on your phone. Kev, are you are you an Olympic guy? You like the Olympics? I can't describe how little I care. Really? Why? You just it just doesn't do it for me. No, I, I, I don't. It, you, I don't, you don't like you the, let yourself I, do it for you. I don't. Do you not like the the different events? Are you just no? I like mean, you, well, I don't watch gymnastics and swimming in my free time, so I'm gonna act like I care about it once every four years. That's the beauty of it. That's not that the that is it was for me. It is. I would watch it year round. The beauty of it is is you don't normally watch it, but then you get excited about swimming and gymnastics. And stuff that you normally don't watch. And you marvel at how great these athletes are for their, without a better term, one shining moment. I mean, th they are all amazing. This oh, what do we got? Breaking news. Brought oh. to you by the Advantage Dealer Group. Do not bring breaking me like news some role guy. On ESPN yeah. Chicago. On Chicago's home oh, for boy. sports. I see it. The White Sox have traded Aloy Jimenez.
to the Baltimore Orioles, according to Jeff Passan. Wow. What do you think they, they got get? from the What'd Orioles? They get? Yeah. Bag of balls. A rosin bag. Couple of crab cakes. <laughs> I'm shocked that another team, unless this is just a, a no. classic buy low. Not just purchase. that. But they're going to, I'm telling you, this is the old, another team's trash is another team's treasure. They're going to look at it. They're going to say, there's a reason why everyone in the White Sox system is getting hurt. They have a problem with how they train their guys, with how they develop their guys. When he comes to Baltimore to be an Oriole, that's all going to change. Right. Because there is still tremendous potential there. Because he could be like Soler. Yes. And, and all of a sudden mash for a team in the postseason. Yes. You just get him a better chiropractor. Get your guy Stewart to work yeah, on him. You saw my guy Stewart. Get today. a better, you know, workout plan or program and develop him. Like I, I, I don't know what they gave up for him, but like I, you take a, I take a flyer on him. I'm not giving you up and giving anything of value, but I take a flyer. On I him. think for the Orioles, a team that basically has everything and isn't giving up a top prospect. They love to classically keep all their top prospects. That this is a, a good move of a buy low prospect for a team like that. Is there any word on whether or not the Dodgers had to be brought in to make this deal happen? <laughs> Nothing yet. No. No, no but, the Cardinals. Yeah. This is a three team. This is a three team deal. My bad. Between the Orioles, the White Sox, and the um and, and, the, and, the, and, and the, the Cardinals. Cardinals. And the Cardinals. The, the Cardinals have given up absolutely nothing. And Shohei will join them <laughs> in their next no, series. I'm joking. Yeah. The Sox are still trying to get Tommy Edmond, I think. For... <laughs> it is just Orioles and White Sox. I, I don't know the return yet. Passing is not. Is anyone? Re- no, we're still waiting. On the, return. the one thing I'll say is, and it's remember, it took a little while for us to actually find out the prospects that the White Sox got in the Fetty deal yesterday. So it still may take a little bit of time. Aloy Jimenez, the way he's playing this season, and you mentioned, Sylvie, the Orioles being stacked. I'm not sure there's an obvious spot in a starting lineup for Aloy Jimenez. That off the bench? I'm dead serious. Like, they may use him occasionally as a DH against left-handed pitchers, but they've got Ryan O'Hearn, Ryan Mountcastle as, like, their first base DH combination that they use in a platoon situation. I don't think Aloy is necessarily going to be a starter in the Orioles lineup. White Sox have no one left. I mean, they'll have Robert. They may have to combine the Marlins and the White Sox to actually have one team when this whole thing's over. Can I read you a headline before we go to break, and then I'll give you the meat of the story afterwards? Well, here, can I give you one quick Jesse oh, sure. rumbling on the uh, on the oh, trade deadline oh, here? Oh, who rumbling? A Jesse rumbling. Oh, a Jesse rumbling. Mm-hmm. He says that he is 99.9% sure Crochet will stay with the White Sox. But that, that's the old Michael Jordan giving us that tenth of a percent chance that he could get traded. You're comparing Jesse to Michael? They're both bald. <laughs> Touche. And the best in the business, too, Kevbo. I'm going to spit on myself. And they, oh, and okay. they both have $17 million mansions that have not been sold yet. What will they do then with him, um, pitching-wise? Oh, he'll... He'll probably he middle, pitch, middle, right? middle relief. You know what? The, no, they'll do what they've been doing with him where he'll go two or three innings every start, every fifth day. So he can keep on that routine, but that way they won't tax his innings. And then they'll probably, Why does he want to do that. I thought he was against that too. Who crochet. What do you, no, I thought he, he's only, he's only against pitching deep into October for like for like a playoff team. No, but I thought he's against like only pitching three. Like no, why not? He's against coming out of the bullpen. bullpen. Do you believe that this is a sign that potentially, if he's not traded, which Jesse says is ninety nine percent the case, that Point they nine. could in fact be working on an extension? That they may. The have... Hell no. Okay. <laughs> hell no. All right. I just thought that maybe someone came to their senses on the other side. Are you familiar with how the White Sox front office uh, does yeah, not sign I pitching, Waddle? No, I get you. Uh, this is the headline. Gen Z women have gotten significantly hornier and returned to office work. The details when we return. So minor, you did not hit the sounder? No? I don't think this deserves a sounder, okay. does it? I... Does Tanner Banks deserve the sounder? I, so. I mean, if you were yelling about Paul DeYoung getting the sounder, I certainly don't think Tanner Banks gets it. Right. The Phillies have acquired lefty Tanner Banks from the White Sox, according to sources. This is from Matt Gelb. Um, Banks is 32. 
He will be a multi-inning reliever who could return to starting at some point. You know, I would ask him the same question Mike McCoy asked uh, Tim Tebow. Tanner, are you sure you're left-handed? That's one of your favorite lines. Of it all is time. great, isn't it? Come on, Tim Tebow is struggling in, in practice right. before the playoff game, and, and things aren't going well, and the offensive coordinator calls timeout and sets. Come on, that's great. Anyway, most Americans uh, experience changes in their sexual desires upon returning to the office in person, with about half seeing their sex drive increase and the other half seeing it decrease. But Gen Z women have become the horniest. This I'm reading. This is a medical story. Yeah, oh, sure. Overall, about 46% of Americans surveyed said they've experienced an increase in sexual desire since returning to the office, while 40% said they experienced a decrease, according to a new study. Why would your sexual um, uh, desires be motivated positively or negatively by going back to the office? Uh, I'm not a Gen Zer. I'm a Gen Xer. But just suppose you're a human being with common sense. Why? That you're, you... you're like a caged animal. Okay. That you've been a caged animal for a while. You're back out. And, and then you got to go home and relieve the stress. So you either, you either need it because you've been caged or you've become so used to being caged and you want distance from everybody. Okay, I just wanted to see. So, what did your, I explain that well? Uh, I, you did. I wanted to see what your answer was. The story says they attributed their growing sexual appetite to an improvement in their mental health, with 22% of young females citing that as a key reason. That was especially true for singles. Looking at everyone who returned to the office, the unpartnered experienced the most notable rise in their sexual desires, with 53% feeling an increase after returning to the office compared to 37% of those who uh, with someone waiting for them at home. This shows how working remotely has affected the mental health of young single people who perhaps spent a lot more time alone during lockdown than those who are or were in a relationship. Do you feel like you're any smarter now that I brought you that story? No, I, I, I no. Okay. So I, here's another one. By you the way, I do have, I do have confirmation from Ken Rosenthal that uh, the White Sox will not be trading Garrett Crochet by the deadline. So they're just going to train him in the offseason. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. U.S. And, uh, tri Jack Flaherty was just traded to the Dodgers. Yeah. Okay. So he goes from he, he was on Detroit, correct. correct? Yeah. And he was him and Crochet were believed to be like the two best arms on the market. Do you think that they did try to trade Crochet and they didn't get what they liked? And do you believe that Chris Getz's decision was influenced by the amount of blowback that he got for the lack of what he got response to the Fetty trade. Maybe not blowback. I think he was influenced by the teams trying to take advantage of them after that first trade. Okay. They were trying so to So then pull. the guard went up. Yes. And he's like, so then he became overly conservative. Because... You guys are now just trying to make fun of me. Right. <laughs> you, you guys are just trying to give me I'll fake give you, offers. I'll give you a Master Boney and $400,000 yeah. right. for Garrett Crochet. We'll give you cash considerations. <laughs> in the background, you hear the, the Cubs front office <laughs> laughing in the background. Yeah, they shouldn't be laughing at no, anybody. That's true. I do think, though, he let us in a little bit yesterday. I think Garrett Crochet and his team saying that they wanted either an extension or they weren't willing to pitch past into October. I do think that probably hurt the offers that the White Sox were receiving. Sure. I don't dispute that. Uh, and because the Olympics are underway, I thought this story was important. U.S. triathlete Seth Ryder shared a gross tactic for dealing with E. coli at the Olympics. It's been uh, over a century since people were last allowed to swim in the Seine. Is it the Seine River? Uh, so it's only fitting that one Olympian is using a centuries-old practice ahead of the men's triathlon event at the Paris Games. U.S. triathlete Seth Ryder, who will be making his Olympic debut this summer, uh, recently admitted that he's preparing for the event by essentially not washing his hands. What? We know that so there's going to be some E. coli exposure, so I just try to increase my E. coli threshold by exposing myself to a bit of E. coli in wow. your day-to-day -day life. And it's actually backed by science, proven methods, just little things throughout your day, like not washing your hands after you go to the bathroom. Oh, so gross. But I guess, right, you build up a tolerance? 
I think that's the case. Yeah. And then it's less likely that you're actually going to uh, find yourself in trouble. All right. Um, and uh, let's hear it for Gizmo, a dog that went missing in Las Vegas in 2015, but he's been found alive nine years later. So those are always heartwarming yes. when you find the dog that's been missing. And the woman who owned the dog just uh, is overcome with joy. Where was Gizmo? Uh, Gizmo was down the street, uh, about like two two communities over. And just living years. with a, another yeah. family? Yeah. Uh -huh. They must not have looked very hard for that dog. Uh, they may not have. But Gizmo's back. Kempo. Uh, the White Sox uh, in the Tanner Banks trade received the number 11 prospect from the Phillies organization, wow. a 19 year old uh, middle infielder, William Barola. He's it sounds like they did well. And he, that's he, better. He struck out, he did very well as a specialist out of the bullpen, didn't he? Banks, yeah. yeah. He, he was one of their more consistent bullpen arms, which, granted, isn't saying a ton. Tanner, are you sure you're left-handed? He'll be a nice contributor for Philly. And by the way, Kevin Kiermeyer traded to the Dodgers. Where was he coming from? Toronto. Oh, thanks. Uh, Bob Nightingale guys saying that the Dodgers were heavily in talks with the White Sox for Garrett Crochet before pivoting to oh, Jack Flaherty. You know, do you think Chris gets maybe like? Yeah, I think he pulled up the. Uh, he put up the wall. I want to know what they offered. I think this is better. Like, but it's not better if they don't sign him to an extension. Give him his money. Well, right? Maybe, maybe like when you could come up with a plan in the off season. I this? see. Like, I get the point that Cooler if you wait prevail. to the off season, more teams may be involved because there are some teams that don't think they have a chance now. The off season is different. Everyone's going to start fresh in twenty twenty five. But are teams as willing to give up a little extra? Right. For in three postseasons, then two. Right. 312 332 3776. The trade deadline is here. It's at it's five o'clock right now. So again, we caution you there still could be a deal or two that was just made, that was just sent to the league office, however they do it these days, and isn't publicized until a few minutes from now. We'll get you all the details. The White Sox got a few under the gun. Did the did the Cubs get one in? We'll we'll go through. And then Kevin Warren, the Bears president, is going to join us in studio at 5:30. Our training camp coverage brought to you by our great friends and partners at Hard Rock Casino, Northern Indiana.